So I'm going to see if I can go somewhere and get another piece of plastic to put over it. Well, after several days had passed and it was time for us to prepare for our grand opening, I said, well, what are you going to do with the picture that you damaged? Uh, he quickly said, I'll go to Lowe's or, uh, or somewhere. Uh, I think I can find what I need to fix it. Well, of course, I looked at him and I said, well, why don't you just take it back to corporate and get another one or get it fixed? He said, are you kidding? I'm the one who damaged it. I don't dare take it back there because then they don't know that I damaged it. So I thought to myself, how many of us, especially mothers, are just like my supervisor? When we have been given the perfect uh, self, we've been given, we, God has put us in perfect condition. However, along the way, sometimes damages happen. And very much like my supervisor, instead of taking it back to the true creator, we set about trying to fix it ourselves. We have had, even from this fair view, this picturesque view of the church in the veil. And, uh, we have had difficulties in understanding that if God gave it, he can fix it. If he gave it, he can take care of it. So we get busy trying to make our repairs. But somewhere across the land, and although we are we're fine right here in Fairview, I'm sure, somewhere across the land, Perhaps at St. Elsewhere, mothers are struggling with the damage which has been done to them for which or which they have done to themselves. And they don't quite understand that they can go back to the Creator. Mothers have a way of putting their best foot forward, taking care of those that are in their charge, picking up behind others, and covering for their loved ones and handling all of the day-to-day -day chores while still maintaining smiles on their faces. However, I admonish you to beware of smiling faces because sometimes smiling faces tell stories. They don't always tell the truth. And I speculate that if you were to take a poll of the mothers at St. Elsewhere, we would discover that there are some ailments which have attached themselves to those mothers, and they have not gotten them fixed. Some of them are suffering from spiritual malnutrition, where they have been busy consuming things around them. They've read the bestsellers, they've grabbed those things that are, are popular at the time, they take them on to the social life and they rub shoulders with all the right people, but still do not have what they is necessary to fight off the ills that come their way. At the end of the day, when everyone has been fed, these mothers are still hungry and longing for some real direction in their lives. Mothers, if you are suffering from spiritual malnutrition, it's time to get that fixed. Some mothers are suffering from irregular heartbeats. These mothers have given their all to those around them. They've been there for their children through thick and thin. They have been up walking the floor when a child has been out past the appointed hour when they have they spent years planting all the good they could in their family without asking for anything in return. Now their hearts beat irregularly as those precious little lambs that they gave birth to or took care of that those persons are now seemingly trying to do everything they can that is in direct opposition to what they have been taught. These mothers' hearts are heavy. They're missing love, joy, and peace that God generously gives. 
So if you are one of these mothers, it's time to get that fixed. Other mothers suffer from selective amnesia. These are the mothers who've had some stumbles and some falls in their lives. They are the ones who became mothers earlier than they planned. Yet they did the very best they knew how. These mothers had to raise children alone and gave them their all. But somehow, they never forgave themselves for the life detours that they had to make <coughs> during their struggles. If you are a mother suffering from selective amnesia, mama, it's time to get that fixed. Then there are the mothers with stiff joint disease. These are the mothers at St. Elsewhere that have difficulty dealing with godly instructions. It seems as though they are waiting for the right time to give their lives to Christ. They have been brought up in the church and may sit on the pew every Sunday, went to church school and worship. However, in their daily duties to their children, this part of their lives takes a back seat. With the stiff joint disease, these mothers are gifted and talented, but have chosen not to share their gifts with others. They are waiting until they get older to make a commitment to Christ. If you are a mother with stiff joint disease, it's time to get that fixed. Other mothers struggle with low vision where they see no hope of rising out of their present state. It's time to get that fixed. Then there are others who suffer from laryngitis where they have been in their state so long and have been so hurt, lost so much time and joy and money until they are at the end of their ropes and can't say a word. They've been captured by the pain and so sometimes having so much stress and personal pain until it seems too difficult to even utter their feelings. If you are a mother who has laryngitis, it's time to get that fixed. Now, let me caution you. This is not the time to give up or throw up your hands because hope is here and help is on the way. On my way, I noticed, on my way in this morning, I noticed that you have Trinity Care, a team of worldwide specialists who specialize in things that seem impossible. They have a reputation that has gone down through the annals of time, and they have never lost a patient. Some of their patients have been featured in the best-selling Holy Word Journal of Medicine. Perhaps you've read or heard about them raising Lazarus from the dead. <coughs> Perhaps you heard that they did some reattachment of an ear that was severed by Peter. Perhaps you heard that they were, someone was getting, they got the demons out of the man until the demons went hog wild in the woods. They did the ocular implant so blind men could see them. And then there was the case of the woman who had the issue of blood for many years. Sometimes we mothers, can all relate to having issues for many years. However, as soon as she got to Trinity Care, she was healed because Dr. Jesus was on call. Although the team consists of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Word Journal tells us that Dr. Jesus is carrying out his daddy's practice. And as soon as mothers can touch 
the hem of his lap coat. Healing begins. Yeah. Okay. The Holy Word Journal tells us that Dr. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Everyone coming to Trinity Care can be healed. All sick people with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils, those which were lunatic and those which had palsy, Matthew 4, 23. So you can let the mothers of St. Elsewhere <coughs> know that they don't have to suffer from spiritual malnutrition, irregular heartbeats, selective amnesia, stiff joint disease, low vision, laryngitis, or any other ailment. You simply need to take it to Dr. Jesus. Mama, if you are having some symptoms, don't wait. You need to get it fixed. Don't delay. Take it to Jesus today. The songwriter said it. You sang it. And it stood the test of time. In simplicity, Jesus will fix it for you. For he knows just what to do. And right across the branch, folk in Simpsonville said it like this. When Sonella, you pray. And that simply means that whosoever you are, whatsoever you're going through, whensoever you pray, morning, noon, or night, if you let him have his way, Dr. Jesus will fix it for you. There are many examples in history, but there is an example standing before you. I've given it up many times, and he fixed it yeah. for me. So for all of you mothers that have been going through, trying to make sense of this motherhood business, and just trying to figure it out, forget it. Jesus already worked it out. Take it to Trinity King. Put a, another part of that verse says, he'll fix it. Broken relationships, he'll fix it. Financial problems, he'll fix it. Mental health issues, he'll fix it. Despair, he'll fix it. Health struggles, he'll fix it. Your relationship with God, he'll fix it. Out of order relationships with somebody other than your spouse, he'll fix it. Need employment, he'll fix it. Need peace, he'll fix it. True love, been waiting for that special person, he'll fix it. Joy, he'll fix it. I can personally tell you that when things are out of order, He'll fix it. Yes, he will. When you're motherless, he'll fix it. When you're fatherless, he'll fix it. Somebody knows he'll fix it. When you just need a friend, he'll fix it. He fixed it for me for over 40 years. And I go in for service. I go in for checkups on a regular basis. Every day. So I've tried it, and I've seen him do it. He'll fix it for you, because he knows just what to do. So whatsoever you pray, oh, let him have his way. For Jesus will fix it for you. Mom, it's time to get it. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Amen.
thank you now, God, for the message. And God, we thank you for the messenger. We pray, Father, that you would write these words even on our hearts so that when the calendar does not say that it is Mother's Day, that we do not find ourselves sinning against you. Now, God, we pray that you would allow us and give us the wisdom and the courage to look inside of ourselves. And if we are broken, if there is something that is not right, something is not working right, something does not look right, we pray, Father, that you would give us the wisdom and the courage to go get it looked at. And after it is that we get it looked at, that we have the wisdom and the courage to go and get it fixed. We know you, God, as a doctor who has never lost a patient. We know you as a father who cannot look at us and see us in need and leave us the way you found. And so, God, we thank you for fixing it. We thank you, God, for healing it. We thank you, God, for doing it for us over and over again. God, if there is a man or a woman, if there is a boy or a girl under the sound of my voice who does not know you, we pray, Father, that you would send them to this altar where they can give me their hand and give you their heart. We pray, God, that you would lead us. We pray, God, that you would guide us, that you would direct us, protect us, and watch over us now. In Jesus' name, amen. The hymn of invitation to discipleship is hymn 251. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. As we stand now, the opportunity is extended to you, the invitation is extended to you to come to the Lord, to come and unite with the Fairview Fellowship as we sing. 